Hey guys, welcome back, and we are going to be doing some coding. Oh, fantastic. Um, I've just noticed something that's really cool. I got a virtual box all set up here with some uh, with some Ubuntu action. I think I'm gonna start using uh, Linux as my development platform because Linux is awesome. So, um, figured out how to get MP Labs and all that stuff installed on. However, I had kind of a problem resizing the partition, so it kind of like blew up on me. But anyway, so we're back. It was actually a good thing though, because then I can show you guys how to do everything pretty much from scratch. Um, you can follow the online tutorials with how to install MP Labs on a uh, Ubuntu desktop or pretty much any Linux server. If you want me uh, to go through that, I can. Um, don't know how I want to put that together, but anyway, um, I'll put some links in the description actually for some some pretty cool stuff that you can get. Like there's a there's a virtualizing software called VirtualBox that Oracle makes now, um, which is actually pretty darn cool. You can use uh, it's free, and then you can install whatever you want on it, whether it be Ubuntu or Fedora or you know all the different versions of Linux. Pretty cool stuff. So, but for right now, I'm just going to. Um, Show you guys how to do uh, how to open up your TCP/IP stack stuff and get it configured. This is the first time I've ran it. I ran it once before, figured it all out, and then, like I said, my my Ubuntu blew up on me. So, pfft, go figure. Anyway, um, so I'm going to basically be doing this again. I don't know if everything's going to work properly or not, so you guys can just have to bear with me. Um, we'll see. We'll see how everything goes. So I'm going to go ahead and get MP Labs X. Started here. I've, I've installed MP Labs X. I've also installed the compiler C18. You need that. Um, I can look and see if I can't put a link in the description on where to go get that um, because it's not easy to find on their website. I had to actually do a search for it. And then also, you need to download the TCP IP stack for Linux, which I think it's version 5. Point something. I can't remember exactly which version. Uh, in fact, I could probably check. I think it tells me. Uh, six fifteen. No, it doesn't. It does not tell me. Okay, well, whatever. Anyway, it's the it's the latest version. Don't get the re the beta one because the beta one is organized totally different than this. So um, I'll put a link in the description on on which one you want to download. I think that might be the safest way to go because um, the beta one is organized like I said the folder structure is completely different and so it may throw you off may, you may be like what you know you're following this video and then holy crud it's completely different so anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to open a project we're going to go in fact I'm already there but if you're in Linux it installs it in your home directory um, it's microchip solutions um, if you're in uh, your if you're in Windows, it'll be just in whatever installation directory you put it in. So normally program files, and it'll just be in there, or it may just be in the in the C. Like if you install it on the C drive, it might just be right there in the C drive for you. It's called Microchip Solutions. Open it up, and then inside there's TCP IP, and you want to double click on that. Then there's this demo app. I'm pretty sure that's what. It, yeah, it's the demo app. You open that up, and then there's an MP Labs uh, .x. Uh, project folder essentially. So we're going to open that up. And it'll take it a while to load because there is a lot that's with it. A lot of stuff that's with it. So you're going to want to give that a second. Uh, and you know what? I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video right here because it takes a little while since I'm in a uh, whatever environment. Oh, no, it looks like it's going to load up for us. There it goes. It's actually coming. Since I've got it in this environment, it takes it a little bit to come up. So anyway, so um, I guess first things first, we're going to make sure that our project is set up properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to run. Oh, if it'll let me click, um, we're going to go. Oh, we're going to go to project configuration. Okay, you notice you got all kinds of configurations to choose from. So now for me, since I'm using the pickdem.net2 kit, what I'm going to be choosing is this uh, is one of these pick dem uh, ones and which one I'm going to choose is this one the pick dn2 
ETH97, because the 97, what that stands for is that stands for that 18F uh, chip that we're using. I can't remember, is it the 97J60 or whatever that is? Yeah. So that's the configuration you're going to want to choose. And what that does is that then sets up the compiler, sets up everything. In fact, if you go, if once you've selected it, you can go back there, go down to customize, and we can make sure that it's selected right. Okay, so it's C18. Oh, and look, it, it didn't find my, my C18 for some reason. I don't know why. I may have to go put that in. I have installed C18, but it seems like it didn't find it for whatever reason. So not to worry, I'll show you guys how to find that. But the main thing is, is make sure your device is like the 18F97J60. That is exactly what we need. So, okay. So now let's go investigate our uh, compiler problem. To do that, let's go to tools, if we can. I don't know why it's being slow. Options, we're gonna go to embedded. We should see, there's this X32. Well, we may have to add it. Go to our base directory. Should be in here. All right, take it back. It should be actually in probably OPT. OPT. There's microchip. C18, version 340. I'm guessing it's going to be in the bin folder. Perhaps not. Uh, let's see here. Worse? No. So I think I may have to take a pausey break and we're gonna have to figure out where this is. So instead of you watching me fumble around, I'm gonna pause, find it, and then I'll let you guys know where it's at. Uh, okay guys, I think I think I may have found it. Um, right here there's this thing, it's called scan for build tools. I clicked that and then it looked like C18 popped up in here and it found it. So it found the base directory and found all of a sudden it went ahead and populated everything. So scan for build tools is what I used. So now, theoretically, we should be able to go back to run project configuration, wherever it is, customize. And, yep, there we go. Okay, now it sees that C18 is there. Now, hardware tools. I have an ICD3. I'm going to go connect it right now. And there we go. I got it connected now. So, okay, so now it pops up. So you can see the serial number now. So I select that because that's the uh, programming tool I'm going to be using. So we hit, okay. So that has that. Now, that's got pretty much everything set up to program. Now, what we have to do is, if you're like me, you're gonna wanna, it comes with a default IP address as well as some other default stuff set for like DHCP server, because you can actually make this thing act as a DHCP server, which is actually pretty darn cool. The TCP ISP stack seems to be fairly powerful. It has all kinds of stuff that you can do, um, SNMP stuff so that you can play with, uh, the other things I don't even know how it works, but I'm sure I'll figure it out at some point. So it has some pretty cool stuff. So in order to set up, you don't want it to be a DHCP server if you're on your own home network and you have, you know, let's say your router. Like I've got a little Linksys router that gives the, is the DHCP server for my house and hands out stuff and whatnot. Um, then you might want to uh, disable that feature um, and just set a static IP. And to do that, what we're gonna do, or or you can, yeah, yeah, you can you can either have it accept a DHCP, which takes some other configuration, or you can set a static IP, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So we come over here to TCP IP stack in our projects description. I believe that's what it is, and then we need the. Oh wait, no, I take it back. I apologize. See, I mean, I got I'm doing this from memory right now. I haven't had it planned. It's in header files. I I apologize. TCP IP config in the header files and you want to pick the header file for your device which obviously they're all grayed out because of that selection which is very nice um, you've got the ETH 97 that's the one you want to edit so we're gonna open that bad boy up so now that we got that in in here we're gonna make uh, a few changes to the code real quick what we're gonna do is right here these define statements um, see how it says stack use auto IP we're gonna change that around. We don't want that. We don't want the DHCP client. We don't want that either. And we don't want a DHCP server. So that's how you do it. You take out the server and it'll automatically pull a DHCP IP as long as you leave those two commented. I'm not, I'm gonna create my own. So I've commented both of those out. So I'll put a little note here. Just kind of put maybe some, some stars. That way I know these are the ones that I comment it out real fast just because if you're if you're 
if you're like me and you can't remember anything, then you know this is this is the way to go. Comment, remember comments take no space, so you can do whatever you want in comments. Okay, now we're gonna go on down. Let's see if we go on down here. All right, and this is the IP address section. Here's the MAC address stuff. Don't mess with that. It's pretty well already set and everything. It even tells you how that you can set your own MAC address, which is interesting, or you can use the hardware one that's already on uh, on the chip, which that's what it's, I think, by default programmed to do. What we're going to look at is this section that's right in here, this, this, this default IP address byte section that's right here. Right now, it's programmed to 169.254.11. That's what that's, is what those, uh, those are for. And I think it's using unsigned longs or something. I, I haven't played with the C18, <coughs> excuse me, compiler, so I'm not real 100% sure. So you got your default gateway, you got your DNSs and all that fun stuff. Um, right now we're just going to program um, just the default gateways and whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm on a 192 network. So we're 192, um, here, you know what? Like again, like I said, I'm gonna undo this real quick. Like I said, I'm going to put my comments in so I know what's going on. So uh, 169 UL is what it was before. 254 UL is what it was before. That's fine. We're going to change this one because we're going to do a different one. 1 UL is what that was. Same with this guy. Well, no, that, that guy. That guy's fine. That guy's fine. Um, we're going to do slash 24 because that's what my network was. So we're going to change that eventually. We'll change this to... 9UL, as well as, and this is so tedious, but dude, trust me, it helps uh, when you get to, um, when you have problems, oh man, it helps to know where you started at. Well, I'm dyslexic, 6, 9UL. Well, trying to talk and type and comprehend is, is a feat for me, I'm sorry. Okay. So there we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start changing everything. So now we're gonna take this 169, we're gonna make it 192, 168, dot one dot, oh, I don't know, 30. Let's put 30 in, it's fine with me. And I'm 24, so that's three 255s, and the fourth octet is zero. Um, let's go to a default gateway, it's gonna be 192, the 168, and then the 11, and then the same thing. Uh, my my router forwards the uh, whatever it is forwards the DNS queries. Okay, all right, there we go. So now that should have everything set up. So now we can come up here and hit compile and look at our output window. And hopefully, all of it will compile properly. This takes a little bit because this is a very large piece of code, so it may take a while to fully compile. And while it's compiling. You may hear, oh, well, actually, I'll probably mute the microphone. I'm gonna go hook this thing up and power it up. So I'll be back in just a second. You guys can watch it compile. Okay, I got this thing all, all put together now. Okay, so our code compiled successfully. That's good, that's always a, a good sign when your code compiles successfully. So now we're gonna try to program this bad boy. Remember that we set up our ICD3 in there, so we should be able to just hit program. And we should be seeing over here, my output window's over here. Oh, uh, it looks like it's gonna recompile it. Uh, sometimes it's, a, it's kind of a hit or miss. Sometimes it'll recompile, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll just take off and program it oh, and then other times it'll it'll recompile so it looks like it's going to recompile so we're going to have to wait oh just a little bit for that to <clears throat> roll through all the different code because like I said this TCP IP stack is a very large program it covers a wide range of devices as you can see up here um, it covers a wide range of devices so that's that's good but at the same time it makes building it kind of big all right here we go now it's doing it it's detected it and now we're programming so hooray should be programming it, yada, 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 yada. This should change up the IP address. Program complete. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and look at it. 
That looks to be good to me. So in order to test this, make absolutely sure, we're gonna see if we can't go to its default web page, which is 192.168 now. Dot one dot thirty is what we said. And voila, there it is. And now I'm actually I'm actually on the PicDem uh, kit. I'm actually on its uh, deal. And if I push some buttons, let's see if I can push some buttons here. Uh, watch this button right here. I'm gonna push it. Oh yeah, and that works. Push it, push it. And I'll push the button next to it. Yeah, that one works too. All right, cool deal. Oops, I think I knocked my. Yeah, I did. I knocked my power connector off, so everything went went bye bye. Okay, well, you can definitely see that it does work, and when it's not working, it doesn't work. So, anyway, so that is basically the first piece of it is how to go ahead and set a static IP address, get rid of that DHCP stuff, and uh, go ahead and reprogram the device. So now from here on, um, you have basically the groundwork for you know the code works, the code goes on the system, it uh, flashes to it properly, and you can connect. So from here on out, we're going to be probably modifying web pages and all that fun stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This will be the first piece of our web development. Look for some other videos to be coming, <clears throat> some simple stuff. I have a few suggestions from some people about different things on simpler topics. We'll throw some of those in there, kind of sprinkle in some basics. Um, as well as do the rest of this. I really like this Linux interface. I, I think it's really nice and it's very big. I notice that the text is very good size. So hopefully this comes out really good in you guys in, in the video and you guys can really see what's going on. So I will guess that's probably about where we're going to stop. So thanks guys. Like, subscribe, share. I'll put the links in the description. Check this stuff out. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, that's it for me today. And like anything else, that ought to do it. All right, take care, guys.